Okay, hello. Hello and welcome. It is lovely to see you all. Uh, I'm Paul. Uh, so I've got about 20, 25 minutes. Um, and I just want to go through a few important things about the college. Uh, I want to talk a bit about who we are. I want to talk quite a lot about our students and their achievements. Uh, but then the main thing I want to get into is how. How do our students achieve these fantastic outcomes? We've just seen Ethan there on national news talking about his fantastic results. How does that happen? Uh, and then secondly, like what are the behaviours? What are our expectations of you? And I want to go into a little bit about a little bit of detail of all of those things, um, just to make it really clear at the outset. Okay? So about 20, 25 minutes, uh, and hopefully you'll be really clear about everything that you're going to need to do with us. So first of all, who are we? What are we? Right? So we're white, we're a sixth form college, we just do 16 to 18 education, we just do 16 ed to 18 education for young people who are going to go on to be the professionals, the future leaders of our society, right? doing level three qualifications, degree level professions. Now our mission is to inspire and support all students to achieve exceptional success. Right? Some of you will have heard me talk about this before, but I mean it. Right? Not okay success, not all right, I suppose success, not well, I could have done a bit better if I'd worked a bit harder success. I want you all to achieve exceptional success, right? Better than you thought you were capable of. I want you to come to college, I want you to find it hard. I want you to be challenged. I want you to have setbacks. I want you to be stretched and grown so that by the time you finish with us, you're achieving absolutely the very best that you could possibly achieve. Both in, both in terms of your examinations and your assessments, but also in terms of all of those wider skills, those wider experiences that you're going to develop with us. Okay? That's the level of expectation. Better than you thought you were capable of. We want to be the best sixth form provider in the country, right? And why not? Why shouldn't young people in Hull and the Humber region have access to the best provision that there is? In fact, isn't it all the more important that young people from Hull and the Humber region Right, over 50% of our students come from the city of Hull, and that is one of the most deprived local authorities in the country. Isn't it all the more important that young people from that place get access to the best education? So that means that they can go on to be the most aspirational, to the most challenging, the most influential destinations. All right? And if you take nothing else from this talk today, I want you to take that. Right? I firmly believe that you are just as capable, just as deserving, of being the leaders of society, right? We don't need our prime ministers to come from the southeast of England, right? We don't need our leading, uh, we don't need our leading scientists and whatever to come from private school, uh, southern backgrounds, right? Kids from Hull, kids from the Hull and the Humber region, you are absolutely as capable. You've got absolutely as much to offer uh, and absolutely as much value to give to society as any of those people. Uh, and that's what we're all about here. We want to support you for that. We want to support you achieve great things, okay? Everyone happy with that? Excellent. So, this is what our students have achieved. This is what they've done last year. Another year of fantastic results. And, you know, we've got to, we've got to play into this, the fact that these students hadn't sat examinations. Right, you're our first set of students for a long time now who've actually been through a fairly normal education process. I'm not trying to disregard the fact that you had a significant impact on your secondary education through the pandemic, but you have actually gone through those two years. You've sat those final examinations in your GCSEs. That's the first time these students hadn't, right? And despite that, they absolutely smashed it. Everyone passed. Loads and loads of students got absolutely the best grades. Um, top 5% in the country for progress. That's what I really care about. I want students to do better than they might have been thought capable of given their GCSE results. I mean, fundamentally, I don't really care what you got at GCSE. If you did really, really well in your GCSEs, that great, that's great, but I don't want you to, to take anything for granted. A-levels and level three qualifications are hard. If you didn't do that well in your GCSEs or if you didn't do as well as you thought you were capable of, right, I don't care about that either. It's all about what you do over these next two years. That is what's going to make the difference. It's all about what you put in. More on that later. Because our students do so well, they make that progress. Over the last three years, 36 students now, often medicine, dentistry, and veterinary, we're, like filler, we're filling the courses, we're filling the MDV courses across the country, and 27 students uh, off to Oxford or Cambridge over the last three years. Now look, you don't have to go to those places, you don't have to want to go to those places, but it's back to the point that I was just making. If you want to go to the most selective organisations, the most selective courses in the country, you can. Right, absolutely you can. Lots and lots of students 
to come to white, go to those most selective, most challenging destinations. So whatever it is you want to do, that is the mindset I want you to take into it. And then this is always the stat that I love best on this. Again, last year, over 75% of students achieved at least one A or A star or distinction or distinction star across their programme. So that means when I look across the room today, and I'm going to speak to every single student today who's starting with us at WIC, and I'm going to say this to all of you, right? I'm expecting you all to be targeting an A or an A star or a distinction or a distinction star, right? That's what I mean. That's the expectation. It's better than you thought capable of. Okay? We all happy with that? Here are some of those wonderful students. So Ethan, so Ethan was in the, in the press a lot, fantastic results, gone off to medicine, that's all really great. But the thing you need to know about Ethan is that just before college he had a significant bereavement, one of his parents died just before he came to college. Also, he comes from a background where they don't have an awful lot of money. Now look, in that context, you could have said, oh, life's too hard, I can't achieve, I can't do it. It could have been an excuse, right? That's not what Ethan did. What Ethan did is he came to college, he absolutely smashed it, got fantastic results, right? He's going off to be a doctor. But more than that, he set up his own enrichment, right? He set up a bereavement society so that he and others in a similar situation to him could support each other through their time at Wyke, right? And that is absolutely the kind of spirit that I'm asking you all to inherit, right? It's not, it doesn't matter what's gone before, it's how you respond to it. Don't treat setbacks as an excuse Right, see them as an opportunity to grow, see them as an opportunity to do better. Right, so we're massively proud of Ethan. We've got loads of students going off to Oxford and Cambridge. I've put a few on the slides just because I really want to make the point that it doesn't matter what school you went to, it doesn't matter if you're male or female or anything else. Right, it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic background was. If you want to go, you can. We've got Katja, absolutely smashed it in her, um, uh, in her uh, A-levels. She's off to chemistry at Oxford. We've got Francesca, she's history this time from Howden. Um, we've got Daria, uh, who's uh, actually featured on the Cambridge website as being their kind of poster person for applying for medicine uh, at Cambridge. She absolutely smashed it too. And then Tilly um, from Carlton. So it doesn't, you know, you could be in Hull, you could be outside a Hull, you could be a boy, you could be a girl. Um, doesn't matter. If you want to go to Oxford and Cambridge, you can. Right, not just Oxford and Cambridge, we've, still, we've got hundreds and hundreds of students going off to the most selective Russell Group universities. Uh, so Alex for veterinary science at Liverpool, Megan, history at Sheffield, uh, Charlotte, uh, sociology at York. Um, yeah, fantastic, fantastic students. And it isn't just about students doing A-levels, and it isn't just about students going on to those Russell Group universities. Our students doing vocational courses, also fantastic outcomes, 88% of them distinction or better. Here's one of them, Desmond from Sirius West. Um, brilliant outcomes with us on health and social care and applied science, and he's going to be a paramedic. Um, Elsa Moan, she's got the best possible results she can in terms of health and social care, and she's off to do mental health nursing at Leeds. Um, we've got Lucy, she's going off to the Cambridge for dance, which is the Addict Dance Academy, having got fantastic results with us. Uh, and Tyler from the Boulevard uh, Academy. Um, Brilliant results across his engineering, IT, and maths, and he's going off to study computer science at Durham. Okay, and it isn't just about students going on to university. About 80% of our students within a year of leaving us go on to university. Um, but we also have those students going directly into the most prestigious employment. Um, so we've got Jazz here. Very strong results across her A-levels, but probably what Jazz developed more than even her academic ability with us was the character, the confidence, the ability to go out there and make it happen. She absolutely... Well, she was uh, loved by the selection, massive selection process to get an apprenticeship uh, with the BBC. So she's creating content for the BBC now. She is a journalist for the BBC uh, as an apprentice right now. Um, or John, right? Now, John had real struggles with his studies, real struggle with, with kind of really properly engaging with White, but we absolutely supported him with that. And he's gone and got some very respectable results. But more than that, he's gone off to go and get a job at the Bank of America. So if in three years' time you fancy being working at a bank in America, right, absolutely take it, go like John, work with the careers team, get stuck in uh, and make it happen. Okay. I've said to this to some of you two before. What I love about these photos is that in two years' time, this is going to be you, right? In two years' time, we're going to be doing this talk to all of the new students we're going to be sat here, hopefully it's as nice and hot a sunny day as it is today, and we're going to be saying, look, look at this fantastic student, look at where they came from, and look how they completely smashed it with us here at Wyke. Okay? Right, how do they do it? 
Well, here is someone who is famous for being very, very clever, saying what he thinks it takes to be successful. And he says, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer, right? Einstein says it isn't about just being smart, it's about staying with problems longer. Now, this makes me think about um, the educational psychologist, the work of the educational psychologist, Carol Dweck, who makes a distinction between the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. Who's heard about growth mindset? Hands up, who's done growth mindset at school? What school did you go to? Wolferton, excellent. So there is a little bit of it out there. So growth mindset, fixed mindset. Two different ways of thinking about learning. The fixed mindset person says, I am a genius. I just know everything. I am going to be absolutely fine. Really, honestly, in my heart of hearts, I don't actually have to work very hard because I'm just a genius and it's going to be fine. Or the fixed mindset person says, I'm not really very bright. Right? Most famously encapsulated in, I can't do maths. Right? I can't do maths. I just can't do maths. Right? It's fixed. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay, that's the fixed mindset. The growth mindset says that actually anyone can learn and do anything they want to do if they are willing to put in the work, the practice, and the effort to learn it, right? The brain is plastic. The brain can develop and grow. What you need to do is to put the effort in to work on that brain to get it so that it can learn all of that material, all right? Now, I'm telling you, the results of our students at Wyke the growth mindset is the true approach, right? It is not the case that all the students at Wyke are just geniuses and that's why they're doing so well. What is the case is they come to Wyke, they work really hard, they put the effort in, and that's why they get such fantastic outcomes. Okay, now this distinction has a few important things. Um, so the fixed mindset person, right, they struggle with challenges, right? If something is hard, then they kind of go, oh, that's a bit of a crisis, that's a bit of a problem. If they fail, Right? If you think you're a genius and then you have a failure, you're like, oh, maybe I'm not a genius anymore. Right? Or if you didn't think you were very bright in the first place and you fail at something, you go, oh, yeah, I knew I was going to fail because I'm not really very bright. Okay? Whereas the growth mindset person says, ah, challenges, failures, setbacks, that's great. That has identified something that I currently cannot do. And what I need to do is put in more effort get more support, talk to my teachers, talk to my peers, help me so I understand how to do it, and then in future I can do it better, right? And probably if you've been through that process, you'll understand it better than anyone else, right? Similarly, the fixed mindset person doesn't really care about feedback, because what does it matter? Like I already know or I already don't know. Whereas the growth mindset person says, actually feedback is essential. I need to get more information all the time to help me grow and develop and do things better, okay? Right, one more bit of evidence on this. So this is a chances graph. This takes all the students who uh, got, so let's say, straight fives at, uh, at, at school at GCSE, and these are their actual outcomes. These are their sort of percentage chances across all the students across the country of what they're gonna get in, let's say, A-level media, okay? So these students all got fives at school, right? Now, the vast majority of them get Bs, Cs, and Ds, that's what you might expect at A-level, that kind of makes sense, all right? But 13% of them get As, and 3% of them get Us. Now, if kind of mental ability is fixed, if it's innate, how can that be, you know? If they all got fives at school because they were just either that clever or not that clever, right, then how come some of them have got As and some of them have got Us, all right? Well, my contention to you is that the students who've got A's, what they've done is they've said, right, I've hit A-level, I'm going to come to Wyke, I'm going to absolutely put all the effort in, I'm going to work really hard, get all the feedback. When, things don't, when I don't understand things, I'm going to go and do more work, I'm going to get more support on that, I'm going to go to the support sessions. And then by the end of it, they've absolutely smashed it. The students who get U's, they're the ones who said, oh, well, I did fine at GCSE, I don't really need to do any work, I'm sure A-levels will be fine. Okay, in my first year teaching, first year of teaching, I was teaching philosophy uh, in a college down in Devon, at Exeter College, and I had a student called Patrick, right? And Patrick was the cleverest student in the class, probably, certainly one of the cleverest. And all through the year, we were talking about philosophical problems, and he, and he, he said really clever things, you know? He seemed to really understand them. He seemed to do really, really well. He said, you know, it was very insightful. Got to the end of the year, it was back when we were doing ASs, and he failed. Patrick failed, right? Why did Patrick fail? 
because he didn't do any work, right? He didn't do the homework. He didn't do the revision. And when he got to the exam, despite all the clever things he'd said in the class, he couldn't deliver and prove that he had that intelligence, okay? Now, I wasn't a good enough teacher back then. I should have sorted him out. Teachers at work would be much better for you. If you're in that situation, we'll intervene and we'll make sure that you absolutely get it sorted and you achieve your very best. But the key point from this is, right, if you think that you're a genius because you've got straight nines at school, right, don't take anything for granted. A-levels are hard, right? Vocational level three qualifications are hard. You're going to need to put the effort in. And similarly, if you didn't get the grades that you thought you were capable of, at school, or if you got grades that weren't very, very strong and you were only just meeting entry criteria for your subjects, I don't care. I still want you to be aiming for the distinctions the distinction star. Every year, we have hundreds and hundreds of students who come to us with okay grades, who finish with fantastic grades and go on to great destinations, all right? And that is what I expect of all of you in the room. Everyone okay with that? Good. Right, let's talk about expectations. So at enrollment, you signed a, uh, a, a student agreement, you signed up to say that you were going to do the things that we've asked you to do. Uh, in your tutorial, you're going to look at this student charter and everyone's going to sign to say that they agree to this, right? This is your contract with the college. This is you agreeing to the things that you're going to do. I want to talk about them in a little bit of detail. So it's aligned around our college values of pride, academic excellence, a caring community and being ready for the world. So the first one is about pride, all right? Before you can get anywhere, you've got to have a recognition of your own self-worth, right? You are important, you are good, you are capable of achieving great things. That is true for everyone in this room. You've got to take pride in yourself, right? You've got to be proud of where you're from, and I want you to be proud of, of your college, right? You've come to Wyke, we're proud about the fact that we've got a great college and we're doing great things here. Now, if you're doing that, if you're that sort of person, if you're taking pride in yourself, then of course you are going to demonstrate good behaviour, you're going to aim for excellence, because that's what you're going to want to do. If you're taking pride in your college, you're going to respect the college, you're going to look after it, right? This is a nice place for us all to come and work in. So you're going to put your rubbish in the bin. If you're chewing gum, don't in the first place, but if you are going to chew gum, make sure you put it in the bin and don't stick it somewhere where we have to try and remove it, right? You're going to use professional language at all times. And you're not going to eat in class because it's a place of work, you're going to get stuck in, you're going to be drinking water. Now, on the slides, it says only smoking or vaping in a designated area. At the moment, Wyke is a no smoking uh, or vaping space. So if you want to smoke or if you want to vape, then you're going to have to go off site. And if you do go off site to do that, can you please do that in a respectful manner? Because you're taking pride in yourself, pride in the college and where you're from. You want to make sure that you kind of represent the college in the best way. OK, I mean, I've got to say, we don't know exactly what the health effects of vaping are, but we can probably assume it's not great, right? So quite why you'd want to smoke or vape, because it costs you loads of money and it kills you. But if that's what you want to do, can you do it off-site, please? Next bullet point. I'm just going to say this once. I'm going to be really, really clear about it, okay? If you come to college in possession of or under the influence of alcohol or drugs, then I will ask you to leave permanently, okay? Everyone clear about that? Lovely. And then please, as and when you get your driving license, please do park in the student spaces as appropriate. OK, so pride. Next one, academic excellence. This is what we're here for. We want to aspire to that absolute best quality academic performance. Some of that is about effort. And we've been talking about effort and that growth mindset. Some of that is about passion, though, being passionate and confident about your work, right? You've chosen your subjects. You want to do those. You're going to read about them, right? In your class, you're going to do four hours and 40 minutes of class time per subject per week. Outside of the class, you're going to have four hours and 40 minutes of work to do as well, right? It's a full-time job, 40-hour week. That's what it takes to be successful at Wyke. Your teachers are going to tell you all about this. You're going to have directed independent learning. You need to use the library. You need to use the collaborative learning spaces. You really need to try and have some place where you can work at home because there's going to be a lot of work to do, OK? If you need any support with any of that, please, please, please do talk to the team. Now, one really important thing about academic excellence is attendance. There is no clearer correlation in education than between attendance and achievement. Right, it's a perfect linear correlation to all the, math all the mathematicians out there are loving this. This is a very, very clear correlation. Now, if you attend below 85%, then you are likely, on average, this is all the students who took A-levels a few years ago, on average, you will achieve half a grade worse or fail 
compared to the other people who've got the same entry criteria, the same grades from GCSE as you've got. All right, half a grade worse. 85 to 90% is a fifth of a grade worse. 90 to 95% is just normal, right? You'll just be on average of everybody else. 95% to 100%, you will be a quarter of a grade better on average than every other student who's got the same in, uh, kind of grades from GCSE as you've got, okay? There is no clearer correlation out there. It's really, really simple. And it's pretty obvious when you think about it, right? If you're in the class, you get in the learning, you're having the debates, you're getting the information from your teachers, you're getting that stretch, you're getting that challenge. If you're not in the class, you ain't getting it, are you? Right? And worse than that, if you're not in the class, you're having to catch up. Right? So you're falling behind. Okay, so attendance. Just every lesson. We will chase you. We have a text system. If, you're, if you don't turn up, then there'll be a text sent home and just to say that you've, you've not attended that lesson. And we are you know, we're really, really hot on all students achieving 100% uh, attendance with us. Now, I am aware that attendance can be a tricky one because you can get yourself into a bit of a pickle, right? If you miss one lesson because you're feeling a bit poorly or you just couldn't be bothered that morning, right? You miss one lesson. And then you find out from your friends that there was some homework that was set for that lesson for the next lesson, right? And then you haven't done that homework because you don't understand it. And then it feels like you really don't want to go to the next lesson because you feel like you're going to get in trouble, right? And then you've now missed two lessons, right? And then suddenly, by the end of the week, you haven't gone to any of the lessons, and you've got yourself into a right old pickle, okay? A negative spiral. Now, if you feel yourself getting into that situation, just ask someone for help. Just ask anyone for help, your teacher, your tutor, anyone in the college, because we absolutely want to work out what the problem was, get it fixed, and get you back in and back in and achieving, okay? We're not here to tell you off. Our systems are all about trying to support you to achieve your very best, all right? So with your attendance, first of all, just attend. If anything happens that means that you're not attending and you feel you're falling behind, just get in touch and we'll help you out with that. Okay, next one, caring community. College is not school. Right, everyone has chosen to be here. You are all young adults. You are all making your way in the world. You are all kind of becoming the person that you're gonna become. You're trying out different things. Right, I love it, it's great. There's no bells, right, it's first name terms. Um, you've got spaces in your, in your timetable. You absolutely have got loads of work to do in those spaces, but we're not gonna tell you that you have to go somewhere to do that or register you to do that. That's part of the skill. That's part of the skill of learning how to work best. Uh, and by the end of the second year, we've developed that independent way of studying. And that also means in terms of the way we work as a college, we've got students from 44 different schools and colleges, from the centre of Hull, from, the, uh, from, 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 from the, the, the towns, the small towns, from the coast, right, from the Vale of York, from all over. Um, lots of different viewpoints, lots of different ideas. In your classes, you're going to have people who've got really different views to you. And that's great and we respect everybody else's views, and we get engaged in really strong arguments. You know, we'll really discuss and try and say to them why you think they're wrong. But at the end of that, you'll absolutely respect them to have that view, right? And lots of people, while they're here, you're gonna experiment. You're gonna think about different types of dress. You might be thinking about your, uh, your sexuality, whatever it might be. Again, we're gonna respect everybody. Everyone's making their way in the world. They're all worthy of respect, and that's how we work as a college, all right? So respectful, respecting and supporting everyone else. We use respectful and professional language. This is a place of work. You have signed a contract. You're coming to work. You're going to do 40 hours a week, right? When you're at work, you use appropriate language, all right? I don't mind the language that you use when you're talking to your friends when you're not at college. When you're at college, it's professional. It is appropriate. Okay, tolerate and accept others. Build friendships. We're going to respect our neighbours. We've got a lot of students now. We've got about 2,500 students this year. So that's a lot of students to come into this, this particular part of the city. Our students are lovely. I get lovely feedback from the neighbors. I also get some not nice feedback about parking in the wrong place and leaving rubbish. So don't do that, please. Um, you do need to make sure we look after the others. We don't have any um, dress code at Wyke. Uh, the only thing you want to make sure is that your, uh, anything that you wear is not offensive, so no offensive slogans, please, uh, and it's appropriate, right? I know it's going to be hot over the next couple of days, but a kind of a level of appropriateness for a workplace, please. The only bit of, um, the only bit of, of uniform that we do have is your lanyard. So everyone at Wyke wears a lanyard, right? You need it to be able to get in through the, uh, through the front barriers, you need it to do photocopying and all those sorts of things. Um, 
Staff need to wear a lanyard, students need to wear a lanyard, visitors need to wear a lanyard. If you're not wearing a lanyard, you will be challenged. You know, any member of staff will challenge you about that. They're not challenging you to give you a hard time. They challenge you because we need to make sure that you should actually be on site. Okay, so just wear your lanyard, wear it all the time. Uh, if, you just, if you choose not to wear it, then we'll, we will need to take action about it. If you've just lost it, you need to go to reception and get a new one because it is the one thing that we need everybody to wear. And then ready for the world. This is the most exciting bit. So 50% of what we do at WIKE is about getting those great grades, but 50% of it is about engaging in all the stuff that goes on here, the trips, the visits, the enrichments, and they're all about developing those character, the skills, the confidence, so that you can go on to those most aspirational destinations. Um, so just get stuck in, like I said this morning, get stuck in, do as much as you can, sign up for everything, find other stuff that you really enjoy, and keep doing that. Okay. So, I've just been through the charter. I've just tried to explain everything as clearly as possible to you. The vast majority of our students, we have lovely, fantastic, hardworking, just lovely students at White. Some students, though, need to be reminded about the fact that they've made commitments to come to the college, all right? And we have a, a behavior management system, um, which is, it's not like school, right? We don't have detentions and we don't have merits or demerits or whatever the different things are that people have at school. Um, uh, positives and negatives, right? We don't have any of that. We have basically a system that's just like a workplace, all right? So you sign a contract, you come into work. If you don't meet the contract, right, then we will do something about it. We'll try and work out what's wrong and then we'll intervene and hopefully then you'll start meeting the contract, okay? So I'll just take you through that. So if you're not doing your work, if you're turning up late, right, if you're deciding that it is appropriate to vape in the toilets despite the fact that I told you not to, right, if you're, if you're using inappropriate language consistently, if you're deciding that you don't need to wear your lanyard, then what will happen? First of all, someone will have a word with you and they'll say, look, that isn't appropriate. If then you then do it again, we will issue a, uh, a warning. We'll put a level one warning on the system. Any member of staff at college can do that. That then prompts a phone call home. We'll phone home and say, look, we've had these behaviours. They're not, they're not meeting the contract. They need to stop. This is what we're going to do about it. You know, on we go. The vast, vast majority of students at Wyke have that warning. They go, oh, right, you did mean what you say. Good. And then they just get on with it, and that's great. Okay? If, however, you don't listen to that warning, and you say, oh, I'll keep doing those things, I'll keep turning up late, I'll keep not doing my work, I'll keep vaping in the toilets, I'll keep not wearing my lanyard, or whatever it might be, um, then we'll issue a next warning, right? a level two warning. The level two warning will say, no, we did mean that. We really did mean that. Send you a letter home this time that sets it all out. There we go. If you decide you want to continue to do those behaviors, the next step is that we'll call a case conference all right, and then this is the really serious, really serious bit. So at the case conference, we'll get your parents in, we'll get all your teachers in, your tutor in, and we'll have a good conversation. We'll say, what is the problem? Right, we know you're capable. What is the thing that is stopping you? And we'll try and really, really understand what those barriers are and what's stopping you achieving your very best, okay? We'll work out what those are. We'll try and put some support in place, whatever it might be. We'll make some more commitments, right, and we'll, we'll give it another go. If following that case conference, you still decide to not follow the expectations that I've gone through, right? ultimately, we'll ask you to leave. And I don't want to do that, because you're all here, you're all going to achieve great things, we're really excited about it. But at the same time, we've got 2,500 students, right? And you've made commitments, and we need to work with those students who are willing to actually do the commitments that they said they were going to do, okay? This is post-compulsory education. You don't have to be here. Right? You chose to come here, you've signed a contract, you've come here, and you need to deliver on that contract, okay? Deliver on that contract, and you're going to achieve those fantastic things that we've just been talking about, okay? But ultimately, for a very small number of students, and it doesn't make me happy, right? I don't want to ask any students to leave, but for a very small number of students, if they're not willing to follow those behaviours, if they're not willing to do the things they said they were going to do, then, then ultimately that's what we have to do. Okay? That's fair enough, isn't it? Good. So... This is what we need to do. Put in the effort. Put in that effort. It is not about being a genius. It's the effort that's going to make the difference to achieve your very best. Get stuck into all of the things that are going on at Wyke. We've got our enrichment fair next Tuesday. Um, do go along, and it's going to be in here and all through Oak, and, and find all those things that you want to do. Meet those expectations. 
it's a great place to be. It's a lovely place to be. Um, meet those expectations. Make it that lovely place. Make it that respectful, caring environment. Meet someone new today. Right, hands up if you've met someone new today. Oh, it's not enough hands. Right, at the end of this, in just a minute, what we're going to do is we're all going to sit there for two minutes and we're going to meet someone new who you sat next to or sat very near to. All right? And then when I'm going to ask you again and you're all going to put your hands up. Are you happy with that? This gentleman here is happy with that. Excellent. So meet someone new today. By the end of today, I expect you all to have met five new people at least. Right, at least five new people. And then, as I say, ask for help if you need it. The expectations at WIKE are really, really high. We expect you to do really, really well. But we also recognise, you know, we recognise, as I was saying earlier, that we support some students who come from the most deprived situations, right? There may be really serious stuff going on at home. You may have caring responsibilities. You may have, uh, you know, serious issues um, to, to face. There may be financial challenges. Right, you might not have anywhere to work at home. I totally, totally, totally know that lots of students at WIKE are facing those situations, right? If those situations are applying to you, ask for help, right? We want to help you, we want to support you. We know you're capable of great things. Those shouldn't be a reason not to achieve. So please, please, please ask for help. Okay, so I'm Paul. Um, my office is upstairs in this building. Please do pop by, it'd be lovely to see you. Um, you can email me at paul.britton at white.ac.uk uh, or you can send me a message on Teams when you're in there and that's all good. Okay? Everyone happy? Lovely. Right. You've got two minutes. Talk to the person next to you. Meet someone new now. Right, okay, so hands up, who's met someone new today? Let's go, who's met someone new today? Come on, let's see those hands. That's a bit better, right, okay, look. Who knows, you might have met a friend for life. By the end of today, five people, everyone. Five new people today. Look, seriously, this today, tomorrow, is like a special moment. It only happens again when you go to university and at Freshers when you first start university, if you go to university. This is like this special moment where you're allowed to talk to anyone. Within like a week's time, everyone will form their new groups and you won't be allowed to talk to anyone, right? All that social pressure will have reformed again. But today, tomorrow, you literally can just walk up to anyone anywhere in the campus and you can just say, hello, my name is Paul. Um, I study maths, further maths, physics, and modern history. And I want to go talk to the University 3 PTE. You can, you, can just, you, can, you can say whatever you like and you can just do it, right? You can just do that um, over the next two days. So don't miss that moment. Say hello to as many people as possible. Uh, I hope you have a really great time. All right, everyone, thank you very much. I'll see you later.